and welcome to another episode of Learning Small Town Business. Happy to have you along with us. Thanks for being here. And today we're going to continue building our business plan that we've uh, that we've started, and we're going to go into part two of ten of the business plans here. And again, this is mostly for small towns. It isn't that uh, the things that we're going to talk about don't work in big cities, but I think as we go through and we talk about it a little bit, you'll see that there are some idiosyncrasies of small towns that uh, work, uh, that will work in small towns that wouldn't work in large cities. So that's what we're going to talk about as we go through the plans here. So thanks for joining us. And today we're going to talk about uh, part two of our uh, business plan, and that's the that's the company description. And uh, if you missed any of the other parts, uh, I'll have the links to those in the uh, in the description below. Uh, there's no reason uh, that you have to watch these in order uh, because you're going to assemble each part of the business plan uh, by itself. But uh, there are some things that will be in one part of the plan that will be transferred into another part of the plan. So uh, keep that in mind as we uh, as we go through all of the uh, things that we're going to talk about. And uh, so, as I mentioned, we're going to write the small town business description uh, for your business plan today. And that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to jump right in right now. And who are you? Uh, what's your business name? Um, who are the principals of the company? What do they bring to the table? Education, uh, experience, certifications, uh, training, anything like that, that will help you uh, in your business plan. And particularly if you're looking for uh, a bank or someone to invest in your small business, then it's imperative that we put as much information in here about you, your qualifications. Uh, if it's a family business, uh, everybody's qualifications, education, all of those things uh, need to go in here under uh, that. And the other thing that we need to talk about is what is your business name? One of the things that I would suggest is that you do a search for your business name. Because uh, if someone has the same business name as you, then they may come calling with an attorney and uh, undo all the marketing and everything you've done to establish your name. Uh, if you're G uh, Gil Hooley uh, Landscaping, there's probably a good, <laughs> a good chance that your name is okay. But if you're Smith Bakery, uh, Smith Shoe Store, something like that, uh, there is a chance that someone else in your state or the next county over or next two counties over or something like that may have a similar name. So make sure before you commit yourself to the business name that you're going to use in your business plan, make sure that uh, uh, that name is not going to come back and bite you later in some kind of a uh, some kind of a conflict. So uh, very important, uh, your business name is uh, you know what you're going to establish. So that has to be one of the top priorities uh, because that is your whole marketing and everything that you do in this business plan as we go through it are going to be directed to drive people to your business. And that name uh, is what you want to have stick in people's minds when um, when you're doing business. Next, we need to write a mission statement. And um, usually a mission statement just is a one sentence. You can think of the uh, uh, you can think of the Pledge of Allegiance as a mission statement of the United States. Uh, it spells out what uh, you know you're feeling about the country or whatever. Uh, a mission statement, um, you know, if you're a landscaper, it might be uh, we provide uh, our, or we're going to provide the uh, best residential landscape uh, uh, available. Uh, and we're going to do that by our extensive knowledge of uh, trees, shrubs, grass, uh, weeds, whatever. And uh, so that would be sort of a mission statement that talks about you, you as uh, the owner of the company and how you're going to make everything happen. So, all right, uh, next, the next thing we need to talk about is we need to describe your products and services. 
So your products and services are the next important thing that you have to do because we, you've got to spell out for, if you're looking to create a business plan to take to a bank, we really need to spell out what are the products, what are the services you offer, what exactly are they? Uh, a landscaping business or an auto mechanic, uh, not necessarily enough. We need a little more than that. If you're an auto mechanic, do you work on foreign cars? Do you work on domestic cars? Do you work on both? Uh, do you specialize in uh, uh, engine repair? Do you specialize in transmissions? Uh, tires, uh, front end uh, alignments, whatever, uh, whatever you do, uh, we need to uh, spell that out very specifically in our business plan. So products and services, absolutely uh, super important to, uh, to spell out in your, in your plan as we go through it. Now, the next thing, of course, once we have your products and services, then we've got to talk about Who's your target market? Who are the customers most likely to buy your product or service? What's their education, uh, their income, uh, their lifestyle? Uh, I worked with a, uh, a, a company who made uh, seat covers for vehicles. And one of the things they wanted to know uh, in mailing lists and things like that was dog owners because dogs, males tear up seats. So they, uh, they targeted uh, uh, people with uh, pickup trucks and dogs. <laughs> so uh, you never know who your target market is going to be and what they need. But you've got to be able to match that up. And we're going to talk about that when we get to the marketing part of the business plan down the road. So keep that in mind that um, what we're talking about here is your target market, uh, your ideal customer. If you were, if you're in business now, Think in your mind, who is the your best customer right now? Uh, what What is it about them that matches up with your business? So target market, absolutely critical to your business success. We've got to identify them. We can't waste money um, attracting someone who is not your target market, someone who is not going to benefit your business. So very important. We've got to know who the uh, target market is. Next, we've got to talk about your competitive advantages. Uh, what makes your business a little different from the business across the street or down the down the block or in the next town or whatever? What what do you bring to the table that your competition doesn't? Are you open more hours? Uh, do you deliver and they don't? Uh, try and find out uh, from your competitors or look at your competitors. Uh, find, look at their advertising. Look at their uh, way they do business. How do you differ from them? What is what is an advantage you offer they don't? So those are the things we're, we're gonna look for. We gotta write those out in the business plan because that's gonna give you direction on how to focus your business uh, away from your competitors. So we're gonna talk about positioning your business down the road. So stay tuned uh, for that as well. Next, we've got to have some goals. We've got to have some business goals. And this is this. If you're a brand new business, you may not have any idea what a landscaping business does in the first year. Uh, at the end of the video here, I'll give you some tips on how to find that information for free. So stay tuned for that. But we've got to find out uh, what are your business goals? And the best way to do that, to look at business goals, is to make them SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T. And it means specific, measurable, uh, uh, attainable, realistic, and timely. They have to have a time limit on them. So you might say if you were a, uh, if you're a landscaper, you might say, okay, in uh, March, we're going to uh, try to book 20 jobs in April. Uh, we're going to do that by uh, advertising in the local newspaper. We're going to send out some flyers. Uh, we're going to have some open house uh, uh, demonstrations, uh, things like that. And how are you going to do that? So uh, is the, is it a, is the a goal attainable with the uh, resources you have now? Do you have enough employees or if it's just yourself? Are the goals you're setting for yourself, are they attainable with 
what you have currently um, to work with. They've got to be realistic. They've got to be within your company philosophy. Uh, you're not going to, uh, you know, if your uh, expertise is in uh, trees, uh, then grass is off the table, you know, so whatever. So we've got to make sure that uh, our goals are realistic and there has to be a time limit. Uh, how long is it going to take us to get those 20 jobs? So that's what we're looking at. We've got to set goals. We've got to set a time limit. We've got to be able to measure by what we're doing every day to make that goal happen. So that's where we're that's where we're headed with uh, with that one. Next, uh, where are you going to locate your business? In some cases, you'll probably be working out of your home, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. And uh, but location in a smaller town is not as critical as it is in a big city because. Uh, if it takes 15 minutes to drive across town to get to your business, it's not a big deal where it is. Now, another thing you need to think about is the, the outside exposure of your business, your business sign. How much traffic goes by the space that you're considering opening your business uh, in? How, much, how many cars go by there each day that are going to be exposed to your storefront if you have a storefront? So those are things that uh, you'll want to include those in your business plan that you've done a study of the traffic. Uh, in small towns, they normally don't keep records like this. In bigger cities, they will. You can go in and find out what the traffic patterns are and, and, uh, on the various streets because the street department keeps all that information. In a small town, more than likely, they don't have the personnel to even, uh, even count uh, <laughs> any of the cars or anything that's going by. So make sure that you understand uh, how much traffic is going to go by your storefront and uh, is that is that going to be critical to your success? So uh, keep that keep that in mind as well. Now, the other thing uh, that people are going to want to know, particularly if you're asking for a business loan, uh, when will you open and how soon do you expect to see results? And again, as I mentioned, uh, I'll give you a tip at the end of this uh, video to help you uh, determine that information. But, um, you know, it, it may take the reason you're going into the bank is that you have to uh, refurbish a, an existing space. Uh, maybe you've got to buy equipment. Uh, you have to do, uh, you have to get a vehicle, all sorts of things uh, that you need for this business loan. Uh, to uh, make this, bring this business uh, uh, to where you're going to be able to open it. So it might be six months, it might be a year before you can open, but your lender is going to want to know this. So what's going to be done with the money between now and six months from now? What's going to be done with the money from now till a year from now? And how's that money going to be going to be spent? And also the banker is probably going to want to look at your receipts what you're spending the money on. So keep in mind that that's also included in your business plan. Now, if you're going to go into this business full time, then you're also going to have to include in your plan, uh, your personal expenses, your mortgage payment, uh, car payment, uh, daycare, uh, your normal uh, things that the business will provide down the road, but isn't providing at the moment because you're not open yet. So, uh, all of those things, the bankers know you got to make a living. You've got to be able to maintain your lifestyle, uh, maybe not at the highest level, but certainly uh, at a livable level and uh, make sure that you put that into your, into your business plan. Uh, the next thing is optional. Um, when do you think you'll leave the business? Uh, in some cases, people start businesses and they think, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to start this business. Uh, we'll get it off the ground if it's successful and we'll sell it in 10 years and I'll retire and, you know, go to Florida or somewhere. Uh, so that may be, uh, that may be an option. Um, you know, in many cases, people start businesses with the idea that down the road, they are going to sell that business. Now this is optional in your business plan. Uh, if you have a plan to leave the business after a certain um, uh, period of time, uh, the, the people lending you the money need to know that, that uh, what is your plan for 
leaving this business. Now, if the loan's paid back before you leave, it's no big deal. Obviously, you're out of the contract with the bank, and so it's not a it's not a deal. But if you've got a 10-year loan or something like that, um, you know there's uh, there's going to be uh, there's going to be more restrictions and more information the bank is going to want to know about uh, what you're going to do. So. All right, some final tips. As I mentioned earlier, we'll give you some tips. One of the things is that uh, you may not know what a landscaping business does in a town your size in a year or two years or five years or whatever. Uh, that information is available and uh, there's a link in the description below. You need to find a small business development center near you, small business development center uh, they are prepaid with your tax dollars, so they're free. Uh, usually, they are with a university. In most cases, they're going to be they're going to be tied to a university or a college uh, somewhere near you. Not always, but in most cases, because uh, the people who run them are normally um, business a academics who also teach and are experts at the, uh, finding this information. They have ratios of what a landscaper, a car mechanic, or a bakery, or a, uh, you know, a shoe store, a barber shop, a coffee shop, uh, whatever, uh, should do in a town with your population in a certain period of time. And they'll have a whole lot of criteria that uh, they can uh, program in, and um, they can give you information in your business plan on this because if you go into uh, if you put in your business plan that I have a landscaping business and our expectation of the first year in a town of 4,000 is we're going to make $2 million, the banker is going to wonder, how are you going to do that exactly? So, so that's the part that we've got to, we've got to be careful with. So uh, the Small Business Development Center, uh, they can also help you with your business plan. They'll review your business plan and uh, give you tips and suggestions on how to improve it and also include uh, various financial information that we're going to talk about as we move down the road, as we uh, create the uh, uh, more uh, parts of the business plan that we're going to talk about in future videos. So hope that will help you. And uh, if it has, uh, by all means, uh, consider subscribing to uh, the channel. We would love to have you as a, as a subscriber. Uh, click the notification bell like uh, the video and let us know if we've uh, if we've answered your questions if you have questions about your uh, the, uh, your business description by all means leave them in the comments below we would uh, be happy to answer those questions for you make sure that you have uh, all the information that you need because uh, we want you to be successful that's why i'm here and uh, we hope that uh, this has been uh, helpful to you all right, in the next uh, video, we're going to move on to uh, your business goals and the objectives of your business. So uh, we'll be talking about that in the next video. And then we're going to do business structure. This is very important. Uh, the business and management structure, should you be incorporated? Uh, should you be a partnership? What should you be? We're going to talk about that down the road. And of course, we're going to do a marketing plan with you. Uh, business financials and your financial projections and all of that. So stay tuned for that for future videos and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.